Hey guys, how's everybody doing? Good news here, the snow has stopped. Yeah, that's right, snow towards the end of May. Welcome to Colorado. One, two, three, four. This video is uh, a, an, uh, a entry into Happy Hippies Dead People's Contest. Um, I don't think that's what he calls it, but that's what we're going to call it here for lack of sensitivity and subtlety and tact and all those kind of things that I am pretty notoriously lacking in. Um, I could also call this the no filter video, but then that would be kind of uh, redundant because that's pretty much every video I ever shoot. Um, so Happy Hippie uh, asks basically what uh, musicians have uh, impacted our lives that have died, I guess, through period of time. I don't know how far back he's allowing us to go and uh, so on and so forth. As always, I'm kind of taking my own liberties with answering and uh, shooting this video, so we'll see how it goes. Um, I've broken it down into categories almost like Emmy Awards or something like that, the Oscars of dead people, um, because there are different ways that uh, people have impacted me. I've got 27 people that made my list almost immediately off the top of my head. Uh, so all 27 will get a mention somewhere. A couple people get a couple different mentions. And um, what else can I tell you about this? Uh, this is all people that died um, before their time. So in other words, people who died more or less of old age are not on this list. Um, these are people that, like I say, kind of died suddenly um, because of one thing or another. And so here, I've, I, because it's so long and extensive, I've got a little, little cheat sheet here. Uh, so you'll see me referring to that. And uh, yeah, that's just by virtue of being almost 64 years old, I guess. Um, so let's get the, the main thing out of the way right away, the uh, the um, leading actor awards, if we follow the Academy Award thing. And these are the biggest personal impact, the, the ones, you know, where you remember where you were at the time that um, the death happened. Um, the first one is John Lennon, probably a pretty obvious one for a lot of people. I was driving down uh, Monaco Boulevard, I think it is, in Denver. I'm not in Denver, so I don't remember things exactly. But I was headed south uh, in our little 63 Volkswagen Bug, um, listening to the radio, which, yes, uh, people actually listen to music on radio. I did. Uh, I can't remember the last time I did that. Radio is pretty much just... Um, sports talk type stuff now, if I listen to it at all. And uh, I was headed to put up flyers for one of our own bands at the time. Um, and uh, all of a sudden, I think I think there was a song playing. I don't remember what the song was playing, but, but the DJ broke in and uh, kind of gravely announced the news that John Lennon had been shot outside of his apartment and uh, then immediately went into playing Imagine, and uh, I cried like a baby, and that was the sad truth of that. Um, uh, next one is much more recent, is Tom Petty. Um, and, you know, I I've, I've, am a Tom Petty fan, uh, always will be a Tom Petty fan, but I wasn't like a super fan or anything, and so I don't know why this one grabbed me other than him being of a very similar age 
uh, to me maybe that was it or something and I uh, saw it foreshadowing my own immortality uh, or lack thereof or something like that. Anyway, Tom Petty dying hit me really hard and there were a few weeks where I could barely listening, listen to anything other than Tom Petty music and uh, yeah, it took me a while to get over. Um, Similarly, uh, Dolores O'Riordan, which maybe you don't know her name. Uh, honestly, I didn't. I knew her as the Cranberries' lead singer. Uh, but <clears throat> let's see, in 2017, which was the um, first year I was a professional Santa Claus, and uh, when I actually got back into listening to music, on a, what I would say is a serious basis. Um, Cranberries was one of the ones that I listened to constantly and uh, kind of developed this close relationship with them. And it just, her, her, her dying, her killing herself seemed so unnecessary because, um, you know, she seemed like from all public, um, perception, public um, publicity, things going out there had cleaned up her act, was uh, back on the up and up and uh, in a very positive phase um, for her, I guess. Uh, and yet, we all know the outcome as a pretty, pretty tragic suicide. Um, so she would be one, and the last one I think for me in the biggest personal impact would be Warren Zevon. Um, again, he's not one that I was super connected to um, musically, although I did always like his stuff, and probably my impact death-wise came after the fact uh, when the documentary came out. Uh, which I'd recommend about his last days and uh, how he struggled to get his last album out. And uh, Keep Me In Your Heart for a While was a big song um, that impacted me and stuff. So those are the four personal biggest impact ones. A couple that I relate to as far as mental illness uh, and my own struggles with depression and bipolar and so on are Keith Moon, who I don't know that it's ever been uh, publicly acknowledged that he had any sort of mental illness. Mental illness wasn't really talked about back then as much as it is now. Um, but I, for one anyway, recognized him as probably having severe problems that way besides um, drug abuse and so on. Uh, so I really feel like uh, what he had going on upstairs impacted his death. Um, and he was always, probably still is, one of my favorite drummers just because he was so unconventional and the, um, the only drummer I can compare him to is, is the guy on uh, Sesame Street on Muppets and stuff, and I forget the name, Animal, I guess it is. Um, Animal, as far as I'm concerned, was probably modeled after Keith Moon's drumming, and uh, The Who were a big, big uh, influence uh, on me, which I'll get into a little bit later. Uh, so Keith Moon makes my mental illness connection route, um, um, not route, but um, that's how he impacts me very eloquently said there, right? I may have to try this again. Um, and uh, the other one that makes the mental illness category is Sid Barrett, which I think is well known as a um, mental illness example. What really touches me there is how uh, Pink Floyd really tried um, to keep his influence in the band, even keep him in the band probably well beyond uh, where he was a meaningful contributor to it. So yeah, that's him. Um, tragic deaths, uh, to me personally, because of, uh, I don't know, 
I guess just how I relate to them as artists, maybe that's the case on all of these, would be Eva Cassidy, number one, just because she is such a peaceful um, and peace-creating person, probably because I had something of a crush on her. Um, she definitely makes the list. And um, another one very similar, and I'm going to butcher the name on this, is Israel Kamakewaoli. <laughs> uh, the um, the Hawaiian ukulele player that has the mashup of um, Wonderful World and, uh, oh gosh, what's the other song? This is terrible because without notes I don't remember anything. But I promise you I remember it. Um, and... Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's one that really touches me. Third one is maybe kind of a surprise. I don't think he hardly ever gets remembered or uh, talked about very much. In Vinyl Community or anywhere else, I don't have an album of his. I would probably pick it up if I saw it in a thrift store or something, but uh, he's not really of musical merit, but I feel like Tiny Tim... Um, is someone who died so tragically because, you know, he didn't seem to be hurting anyone. Uh, if you're familiar with Tiny Tim, he's a kind of this goofy guy. Um, but, um, again, he just seemed like he wasn't harming anyone, and I was always kind of happy that someone like that managed to succeed and do something that uh, caught popular attention. Um, so those are my tragic death ones. Uh, well, now we'll flip it kind of a little bit and my category for ones I'm really not very sympathetic to at all. Uh, in fact, kind of their, their waste of uh, their talent and celebrity and so on kind of uh, uh, hit me pretty hard. That's Elvis, for one, Elvis Presley. I kind of feel like how he kind of petered out towards the end of his career and became this kind of pathetic figure. Uh, I remember almost feeling like good riddance when he, uh, his death was announced. Uh, the second one on this list is Jim Morrison. Uh, not a big Jim Morrison fan as far as how he conducted himself, uh, and especially relative to the musical talent that he had. I think he was a genius, but I think he was a genius that kind of wasted what he was God-given. And uh, so again, when he died, wasn't any real love lost for me. Keep in mind, these are my personal opinions, and I'm just being real dead honest with you. I'm not uh, saying that uh, these are justified opinions. Uh, I recognize that some of them are really not justified or are really kind of uh, uh, showing my own character flaws, biases and stuff, but nonetheless they are what they are. A um, couple that impact me professionally, um, or I should say in my eh, professionally in my own musical journey and so on, are John Entwistle, uh, again from The Who, the bass player for The Who, um, and uh, he makes the list as far as, as uh, you know, first of all, seeming like such a strong human being, I would almost put him in there with like a Keith Richards or something, that seemed like he was built like a tank, could survive anything, and of course now we know that's not the case. But really how he impacts me personally is he was a big influence me influence to me as far as uh, how he played. If I had um, one person, mm, one of two people who uh, really I kind of wanted to be like as far as a bass player, it would be John Entwistle. Uh, just out of curiosity, if you're interested, the other one would be the original bass player for the Doobie Brothers, whose name escapes me now. And as far as I know, he's still alive, but uh, he's the other one I would have liked to have been able to play like. Um, the other one kind of goes more to my 
time having a, uh, a sound reinforcement company and doing uh, sound for a lot of, uh, you know, mini concerts and keggers and stuff like that, woodsies maybe you called them. Um, and this is really where it comes in. You know, I did a whole lot of gigs where I'm running off of a generator and stuff and in less than ideal weather conditions. And um, there are uh, several people that uh, it's well documented died from electrical shock uh, a lot of times because their um, lips got in, came in contact with microphones and so on. Um, I was always really paranoid of the danger and freaked out by people actually dying uh, from electrical shock based on musical equipment on stage. Uh, so they're nameless, but uh, they definitely made an impact on me. Um, musical impact, this is kind of one, at least the person at the forefront of the list, I don't think is any surprise. Um, and let me back up for a minute. Why this, well, my criteria for this category is people who I think had they survived, had they lived beyond their untimely deaths, would have really greatly impacted um, how music developed. Uh, people like like Tom Petty, I mean, if, if we're honest, or the Cranberries, a uh, woman, Dolores, um, you know, their, their time, their, their peak as far as influence on music had kind of passed. I don't think they were going to... Um, influence music much beyond what they already had. Um, in fact, it could be argued maybe with some people, maybe that plays into their death because they've become somewhat irrelevant. Um, but anyway, as far as musical impact at the time that they died, um, in kind of the sense of who knows where music might have gone had they lived, I think Jimi Hendrix has got to be at the top of the list. Um, you know, people are still trying to figure out what he did and how he did it and so on uh, today. And frankly, I have no idea where guitar playing might be had Jimi Hendrix lived um, beyond the rash of 27-year-old deaths. Hank Williams is another one, uh, you know, because he was almost like a punk rocker in country western music way, way, way before country or uh, punk rock was a thing. Um, Hank Williams survives. I don't know where country music goes, how it develops, you know, maybe some of the uh, really hokey country music that we have may not ever have happened. Certainly he was a major force as far as songwriting. I'm sure we'd have some great songs that don't exist had he not died when he did. Um, yeah, I add him to the list. Buddy Holly, um, because really people don't realize that he was doing some pretty innovative thing as far as recording techniques and so on again major influence as far as uh, sound and so on. Um, he kind of died at his zenith, um, if not before it, and who knows how music might have gone had Buddy Holly lived longer than he did. Uh, final one on that category for me is Kurt Cobain. Now, I wasn't a Kurt Cobain fan until way after his death. Uh, uh, you know, I didn't discover Nirvana as far as someone that I really liked until much, much later. Kurt Cobain was a genius that dies way too soon. Um, and who knows where music might have gone had Kurt Cobain lived. That's, I mean, that's the case with all of these four. We just don't know how their lives would have impacted music had they lived beyond the time of their untimely deaths. At least that's my opinion. Um, now another one, this is kind of a, I don't know how, how well it's going to come across as far as uh, my, why it touches me personally, is uh, Mama Cass Elliot, and again, the Hawaiian ukulele player, 
Israel, comma, kawalawoli. Um, <laughs> um, and uh, I guess maybe it is really easy. Um, it's because they are people of size. It's because um, I think that's one of the areas that it's still okay to kind of make jokes about and so on. Uh, you know, the Mama Cass Elliot thing with her choking on a ham sandwich, which is not true. Um, the kind of insensitivity to people of size, and certainly I identify with that category, and so the kind of insensitivity towards their deaths um, makes a big impression on me. Uh, but I can flip it to the other side too, and Karen Carpenter gets included in kind of the um, um, societal prejudices ones. I don't think she's treated very sympathetically because of her um, eating disorder issues and that being the primary cause of death as far as she's concerned. So I put her on kind of the opposite end of the spectrum. Um, okay, so that's people uh, with body issues, I guess we'll call it. Um, Drug-related deaths, really I've only got one that really kind of I identify as, as the um, tragedy of, of drug susceptibility, uh, drugs in a kind of the final way impacting your life and, and uh, illustrating the waste of drug addiction, and that's Charlie Parker. Um, I think uh, jazz music, you know, would have, who knows where it would have gone without uh, the drug influence that uh, most people acknowledge as the death of Charlie Parker. Um, personally, I think he may have been as influential as uh, John Coltrane. Um, who knows? Who knows? Um, but uh, yeah, when I think of Charlie Parker, when I think of his death, um, I think of uh, drug, not overdose, but drugs just wearing you down as far as uh, their influence upon your life. And showing what a waste drug addiction can be. Um, now this is an interesting one as far as suspicious deaths, uh, you know, kind of feeding into conspiracy theories and stuff. I once again reference Kurt Cobain, um, and this one definitely uh, shows my own character flaws. Why I still believe in the uh, Kurt Cobain um, conspiracy theories as far as how he died, that he didn't take his own life, and so on. Really, if I'm real honest with myself, it's uh, my bias against my hating Courtney Love. Um, I think she's just a despicable human being and um, a waste of oxygen in a lot of ways, so I blame her for killing Kurt Cobain. Probably not true, um, probably unjustified, probably very wrong of me to think that way, but nonetheless, there it is. Being totally honest with you, probably being way too much information. Um, yeah, I, he's the one I think of, of, really, did he die that way? Uh, I don't buy into the Jim Morrison is still alive in France somewhere, or Jim Croce is on a um, um, Caribbean island somewhere, all that kind of stuff. Glenn Miller, um, you know, was avoiding a bad marriage and so um, faked his own death. All those kind of things I don't really buy. Kurt Cobain's one, I don't buy it either, but uh, I'm kind of going, man, what was going on there? Because... Again, he uh, died way too early as far as I'm concerned. Um, last category I've got of uh, someone who impacts me 
um, is someone that musically I still have nothing to do with uh, personally because I don't I'm not part of the genre uh, I'm not a metal person and so until I met someone else who was greatly impacted by the death I didn't even know who Dimebag Darrell was um, and uh, I had no awareness of how he died um, anything like that but my oldest daughter's boyfriend is a metal guitar player who idolized Dimebag Darrell and still does still kind of gets choked up when uh, he talks about him and stuff like that and so to me I guess where he really impacts me or his death does is the power of a musician to impact another um, you know, uh, not a bandmate, but just a fan, just uh, another musician um, who um, is greatly touched by their death. Okay, so those are all the categories I've got of this happy topic. Uh, and by the way, happy hippie, thank you for bringing it up, because I'm sure people are loving this list, uh, especially with our own... Um, problems with death and um, you know desperately trying to avoid it and so on in this day and age um, so here is my honorable mentions category I can't really think about why I can't really come up with why they make the list nonetheless here they are uh, that is Chris Ledoux maybe people don't really know him uh, he's known in Colorado because he uh, hails from Wyoming just up north here by a few miles from where I'm at and um, if you're into country music at all he was a fabulous uh, songwriter a really interesting person as far as his background and so on and tragically died of uh, cancer I believe way 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 too young uh, Doug Somm I've talked about just recently um, he uh, definitely was one that I would no doubt uh, think that hard living is part of why um, he died an untimely death um, but uh, he was such a strong personal influence to me that he deserves to be on the list somewhere Towns Van Zant um, his writing I think is undisputed and uh, he could probably go into the mental illness one because I'm sure in my own mind that that played into uh, his death and I think it's pretty well acknowledged publicly that uh, that plays into it Stevie Ray Vaughan um, you know he is at the top of the list for me as far as uh, blues guitar players certainly within the pantheon of blues guitar players and so his death is just tragic that way um, number of these people um, kind of uh, if I've got a bit of advice as a musician don't fly don't get in the air because uh, it seems like nothing good happens that way musically I would always go to gigs if I was a superstar taking trains um, buses um, cross ocean, ocean voyages something like that to avoid flying because it seemed like uh, airplanes and helicopters and stuff don't mix with musical fame uh, Patsy Cline makes the list just because I personally think she's one of the greatest female singers ever um, what she could do with a song and how it touches me and how she puts all of herself in it uh, is just magnificent and so she's another pr plane related death that um, you know even even as a young young kid hearing about it um, you know and I think I was hearing about it posthumously or whatever the word is um, she makes the list and uh, Glenn Miller going even further back than that just because I'm named after him and um, thereby you know got into guitar or uh, trombone playing and uh, still like big band and swing music and so on he comes from 
this part of Colorado that I'm in. I'm in Fort Collins. He came from Fort Morgan. Uh, my family has some tie-ins with him because um, his brother was supposedly the dentist for some of my relatives and so on. Glenn Miller's got a lot of tie-ins for me, so his uh, um, unexpected death definitely deserves a mention. Janis Joplin, um, you, know, you may be surprised that she doesn't make the list somewhere else as far as a super big impact. Um, I don't know, I, I never connected with Janice in that way, but I still um, did make a mental note when she died, and uh, certainly I can acknowledge that she was a tremendous loss as far as talent and uh, her contribution to music of that point in time. And I think her contribution to um, uh, the female artist, I think, uh, is maybe kind of underrated and could be explored as well. So, yeah, she makes the honorable mention part of the list. And then finally, uh, to uh, pick one that maybe makes the list totally out of the blue is Dean Martin. Um, you know, other people are Frank Sinatra fans, Tony Bennett fans. Um, me, I'm a Dean Martin guy all day long. Um, I don't know why. The guy just kind of how he how he um, joyfully lived uh, all his life, big time influence on me, or impact on me, I should say, not influence, because uh, I live far, far, far from how Dean Martin, I think, lived his life. But, uh, you know, he lived maybe shorter time than he should have, but uh, seemed to squeeze the juice out of life a whole lot more than um, most people ever will. And uh, so he makes my list as far as um, kind of how, how a life can be lived and uh, the joy he brought to music. The talent, the raw talent, the uneducated uh, or untrained talent uh, of musical capabilities, you know, was up there with any any raw rock star. Uh, so yeah, he makes my list. So happy hippie, there you go. Uh, thanks for making this a wonderful Wednesday morning. Um, and uh, certainly this is enough names to make your contest, I think. And uh, seriously, thanks for bringing up the topic. Because I think it is noteworthy to remember those that passed uh, way, way, way ahead of their time. That's it for this time. Uh, everybody be good to each other. Remember that uh, we all can pass at any given moment, so make sure you express your love and appreciation to those within your own circle. Um, you know, appreciate them while you have them. All right, that's it. Talk to you later. Bye.